Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. Look, I got a haircut. <laughs> yeah, best cut. And just, uh, trying and to get keys. my keys. Out. I know. I tried to get my <laughs> keys out of my pocket right at the wrong time. Uh, yeah, I got a buzz cut. Looking more like Dustin every day. All right, we're we're looking like twins. <laughs> Twinsies. Twinsies. We're only twenty-two years apart. Right. Got my pineapple orange juice. We're we're oh, identical yeah. twins, just different year, different day. Yes. <laughs> So I hope you guys have had a great week. Uh, we've had a good week here. We, Dustin and I have been crank, <clears throat> cranking away on our Birds of Prey course, as you can see here on my desktop, if you want to switch over to that. This is the last one we did. We're working on swallowtail kites, which are beautiful birds. Oh, yeah, there we go. You got it? Got it. Yes. And uh, so there's that. Goodbye, swallowtail kite. Today, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going through some of Dustin's photographs, and I came across this little swamp bunny. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to do a painting of this guy with maybe some little elves and or elf or some fantasy creature sitting with him, you know, like a I don't know, little a little alternate universe. Little little buddy, little buddy. Mm -hmm. Man, pineapple orange juice is good. Really? Now, did you just mix the two together, or did it come like no, that? No, it came like that. It's dull. Mm -hmm. Sounds tasty. But uh, what what day is it? Today's it the 15th. Is, uh, 15th. May 15th. Halfway through the month of May. And uh, let's do this. I'm going to bring this down here. Um, I want to remind you guys, like I always do, we've got crazy deals going on right now at the website. And uh, uh, we've got our, our, my animation course is free. And um, we've got really big slashes on uh, a lot of our other courses. My Photoshop brushes are a dollar. Um, some of our other courses are a dollar. Matter of fact, today I'm going to be using my fur brushes, my hair and fur brushes that I've made, which you can pick up for a dollar on the website. And you're going to see how I demo them when I create this little bunny, little swamp bunny. It's so cute. Mm. I can't stop drinking this. This is really good. <laughs> Oh, you so, pineapple orange. I know pineapple orange is delicious. Uh, so anyway, and uh, uh, but other than that, we've been cranking away. I hope you guys are having uh, are surviving your your lockdown. I know a lot of the world is still in lockdown. Some of you are starting to come out of lockdown. And uh, you know, just be careful. You know, uh, don't go crazy. But uh, but get out and live some life. Austin says hi. Hey, Austin. That's my daughter. You best jogger. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nick said the correct date is March ninety third. Yes. March ninety third. <laughs> can you imagine if the months go by a hundred days? Yeah. Anyway? Do you want to make your you make your announcement? Oh, um. So, honey, guys. So, I'm really happy to announce that uh, sometime later in the day, I think around five. Nick was saying around five o'clock ish. So, Whatever, the end of the day. Yeah, by, by the end of the day, my very first wave of photo packs will finally be coming out to CreatureArtTeacher.com. And it's a uh, Florida Marsh Wildlife Pack. And it's going to be six different packs that you can buy either in a bundle or you can buy them separately. And it'll be of Sandhill Cranes, Great Blue Herons, uh, Common Egrets, uh, Songbirds of Savannah Sparrows and Palm Warblers, Alligators and North American River otters. And I really hope you guys like them and they'll be coming out by the end of the day. Some great reference in there. Really good stuff. So we're looking forward to that. And without further ado, adieu. Adieu. So here is, I was just messing around with some of the brushes. You can see here um, the, the effect you can get with these brushes. They're great. They're, they create really cool fur textures. I love using them. But first, I want to do the drawing. So, <clears throat> and we're just going to jump right in. Right, let's do this. I, uh, we've been working away on our, on the, on the uh, Birds of Prey course. And we're super excited for that. I, uh, 
I love these little bunny ears. They're just, <laughs> they're very small. What were you laughing at? No, just the, the small, small ears thing. It's like, they, I think that's what makes them extra cute is the tiny ears. Yeah. And also somebody commented on my announcement and said, I thought Dustin was going to announce he was going to be a dad. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> 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 I just no 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 I don't see myself doing that <laughs> mm. can you hear that yes. lovely smell smell lovely sound of ice hitting the tub oh yes <laughs> bloody hell I thought I was just watching the baldies and the, from the wanderers <laughs> you know, I I, uh, I got bored a few few a couple uh, few weeks ago and cut off all my hair, <clears throat> and now I just if it grows back I can't stand it. <laughs> That's his photos of the kites were gorgeous. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we I I had a lot of fun taking those. Like Dad, <laughs> I was like, get the camera, get the camera. There's so there's a kite flying right over us. <laughs> YouTube comment, greetings from Scotland. Just wanted to say thanks for the courses. I picked up a couple on sale. Liked them so much, I subbed for the year. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, that year subscription is really worth it because during that entire year, anything we come out with, you, you own it. You get it. You get it? Got get it. it? Good. Get it? Got it. Good. Have you seen the training video by Arnold where he walks away in the end? Uh, no, I don't think I have. I seen have. That, where he's stretching? Where he's. What? Where he's stretching? He's got his legs stretched. Oh, out. that. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the images of it. I haven't seen the actual video. Oh yeah, the video's good. <laughs> I love Arnold's stuff. It. <laughs> he definitely looks like a fun guy to hang out with. Actually, Nick is. Uh, let me. You know, it's reminding me that the membership right now is currently at its lowest price in two years. So if you're interested in getting a membership, now's the time to do it. Because uh, it is the lowest it's been in two years. And we're not going to keep everything this low forever. The resource artist on Instagram said they ordered a bunch of your courses from, from your sale. It costed $2. Love it. <laughs> See, imagine that. During subscription or forever, as far as like da being able to download any anything for free. During the subscription, what do you mean forever? During the su your subscription is good for a year, unless you uh, unless you uh, renew it. Yeah, so once you download the content uh, during your subscription, you have it forever. However, if you lose your subscription and we get and we release more content after that, you have to renew your subscription or or buy that uh, course separately. I watched a video of a swamp rabbit swimming. It was awesome. I've never seen a swamp rabbit swim. No? In fact, I don't think I've ever seen any rabbit swim. I'm used to seeing them just hopping around. <laughs> like Bug Bunny. I love your classes. What brush do you use for sketching in Photoshop? This is a brush that I made. It's my Pastel C number 7 brush in my, uh, in my original custom brush set. Hey Aaron, do you know that today is National Dinosaur Day? I didn't know that. Isn't every day a National Something Day? Or International Something Day? I'm pretty sure there is. <laughs> I know there's like a, hey, today's National Hot Dog Day. All you can eat is hot dogs for the day. <laughs> next thing you know, the next day is Pizza Day.
There's also one video of Jean Claude Van, Van Damme stretching over two semi trucks. I remember seeing that That's one. That's an old one, yeah. Yeah. Known as the perfect split. So I'm trying to sketch this out really quick. Figured I'd make it a fun little creature. He's got all those little, little, he's wearing all these little uh, bits of grass and berries and things like that. That's camouflage. Nice. <clears throat> Hi, Aaron. Just curious, what do you thought of the old Warner uh, Warner Brother cartoons? That's funny, uh, Nick, the, Nick the the has this one right here. The artwork and animation. Such as Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner? Yes. I right. love them. I grew up on those, and I, I just, those are, to this day, those are still my favorite. And there's one scene in particular that I can do that makes Dad laugh every time. <laughs> Duck season. Yeah, that's a perfect bug. Rabbit point. season. Duck season. Rabbit season. <laughs> Rabbit season. Duck season fire. <laughs> <laughs> It's still like you do a perfect you do a perfect Daffy and Bugs. It's funny. Let's try that again. Put little bits of grass in his mouth. Hey Dustin, thank you for being with us again. I know for the last stream that uh, you followed Peter McKinnon, I think he is a that he is great and has a lot to teach. My question here would be, where did you learn to take such amazing photos, and are you self-taught? Do you have any other resources that you recommend? Um, I actually learned quite a lot from watching Dad take photos growing up, um, and also looking through the composition of the way that he does his uh, animal artwork of like the rule of thirds and the lighting and when it came to specific photo stuff like how to shoot the shutter speeds and all that I actually watched a lot of Peter McKinnon and um, and Jared Polo they have uh, deep in their archives they have some really good videos on YouTube about that stuff um, and yeah so I'm pretty much uh, self-taught in a way and I started with a simple camera, Rebel, Canon Rebel T6, and just kind of worked my way up from that. Very cool. <clears throat> Nick says National Hot Dog Day is July 23rd. He said he goes to the Old Salty Dog in Sarasota every year on that day. Isn't that the place where I, I, did, the, uh, I did the shellfish burnout? I ate so much shellfish there. Like platter after platter after platter. And I think there's a holiday for... There's like a special day um, of the year for 7-Eleven. And you get a free... And each person gets a free Slurpee that day. Oh, really? If I recall. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what day it is. Where are you reading the questions from? I'm reading them from... A laptop right right next to dad. <laughs> I'm kind of trying to, and I'm, and I'm going between uh, uh, Facebook comments and uh, Instagram comments. Meanwhile, Nick uh, uh, is monitoring all the other questions from Twitch and uh, YouTube. We're, we're streaming on multiple platforms currently. I just want to lengthen his arms a little bit. Get those little arms a little longer. Just like that. You always approach your art the same way, or is it different depending on the art? Example, do you always do shadows first and then lighting, etc., etc.? Yeah, I pretty much do everything the same way every time. Um, that enables me to be faster because I have the same approach every time I'm not you know it's 
I don't have to figure things out new every time I, I sit down. And so that, you know, if you can do that, if you can kind of find a, a system or a way of doing things, then it really does help your speed. Have you ever watched Rio? I watched it last <laughs> night and brought and it brought back so many memories. Yeah, I love that movie. It's, <laughs> I haven't watched that in a while myself. I need to watch that again. Some, did somebody just knock on the door? I, what was that? What was that? What, 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 what was that? Did somebody knock on the door? Oh, FedEx is here. Yeah. We got two boxes uh, from FedEx. Two? We got two boxes from FedEx. Two boxes. Wow. And actually, one of my favorite songs is from Rio. Um, it's called Fly Love, uh, sung by Jimmy Fox. One of my favorite songs. It's so romantic. <laughs> 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 that was funny, huh? That was funny, huh? That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> is this with Photoshop? Yes, this is Photoshop. And what are you currently drawing with? With a stylus? Yes. Uh, you can see my setup right here. Hi. So I uh, have the big monitor here, and I draw on, on him. It's a uh, Wacom 32-inch Cintiq. See, I'm thinking throw. about doing this. Whoops. Maybe here. And then adding grass and, and whatnot. Let me see. And what's the current brush that you're using? Uh, this is my... my uh, my number seven brush that I always use. Let me see. I think that, I think, do you like that composition better where we can focus a little bit more on their portraits and I can just get, I can draw some taller grass to frame them in a little better? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I like that, that, that uh, portrait feel. Helps them fill the frame a bit more. Yeah. And plus I'm sure it makes it a bit, um, easier for you to draw everything in. I'm just going to refine the drawing a little bit. YouTube question. Hey Aaron, what's the difference between characters of Disney and Nickelodeon? Uh, visually? I don't know. Um, I actually don't know much about the characters of Nickelodeon. You probably know more about them than I do, Dustin. About what? Characters of Nickelodeon. Characters of Nickelodeon. Oh, God, I haven't watched Nickelodeon forever. Uh, there's Rugrats, there's Cat Dog, Rocket Cat Dog. Power, SpongeBob. Um, and I think growing up, what, one of my favorites, and so is uh, Austin's, was uh, Rocket Power, which was all like, like, skate, like skateboarding, surfing, and rollerblading kids. Uh, uh, live action? No, it was all animated. Uh, Austin confirmed it. it uh, the Slurpee thing, it's National Slurpee Day on July 11th. 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. Yeah, Nick just put that up there. Good evening, Dustin and Aaron. Do you have any thoughts on the... Good evening. evening? Do you have any thoughts on the Asus uh, ZenBook Duo? And I think that is the laptop that has two screens on on it. I've heard a lot of good things ab about that about that laptop. I don't know anything about it. I'm actually considering on investing into the Pro Art series Asus. It's been on the pricier side, but has um, some more powerful uh, components inside that makes it easier to render with. Oh, I forgot about Ah Real Monsters. That was a good show. Uh, any tips on getting skin texture in Photoshop uh, from whales? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of you know you can oh. create it. Oh, my mistake says from whales, not not like a question, but it's from whales. My mistake. But um, oh, I mean they're from whales, the country. Yeah, the country. Yes. Yes. But was that uh, the person was asking? Do you have any tips on skin texture? 
Yes. Um, you know, for doing stuff like that, you can create, you know, different types of textures and create a brush to, uh, matter of fact, I've had that question a few times. I got to create a, a skin texture brush set. Because in the same way, I'll show you that I, I've created um, these fur brushes and hair brushes. Uh, you can do uh, skin textures. Is that Nick? Oh, it was Austin. Austin texted me. Austin, stop texting. We're busy. <laughs> uh, Twitch question. Hello, Aaron. Can you draw an elf on a rabbit, please? Thanks. <laughs> Sure. Let me get right on that. There. I like this little guy. Hmm. Your device is offline. Whoa, hey! Swipe down Alexa, from the top shut of up. your screen. Hmm. Your device oh, is quiet, offline. Quiet, Alexa. To connect. Oh, just, just turn, turn it off. How do I your turn it off? off? There we go. I just don't <laughs> turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> I changed. We got a. I got a new uh, router system, and I haven't hooked her up to it yet. Uh, is the brush you're currently using included in your digital painting on photo, uh, Photoshop package? Um, that I don't know. I can't remember if we included that in there or not. I think we did. It's You can just sign up for my newsletter and you can get this brush. This brush is great for drawing digitally. It's one of the, I use it for everything, for painting. and It's got a nice texture to it, as you can see. Twitch question, what are your thoughts on seeing films you worked on made into live action movies? You know what, if, if the movie has something new to say, then I think it's great. If it's a new way to express it, um, I don't want to slam it. You know, I don't, I'm not going to say one way or the other whether I thought the other ones were good or bad. Um, I've enjoyed some aspect of all of them, all the new remakes, I've, you know, some aspect of them I've loved uh, on all of them. And so some I thought were more successful than others. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, some people get so wound up about it. It's like you're, relax, Francis, lighten up. Lighten up, Francis. Lighten up, Francis. It's not that big a deal. But, um, I do think, you know, it's, it's, Hollywood needs to make money. That's, that's why Hollywood, Hollywood is there. Hollywood is not there for are solely our, uh, our our entertainment and our childhood. They're there for you, you know, to buy a ticket to go see a movie and them to make money. And and every movie is a risk. Okay, you don't know if it's going to be a flop or if it's going to be a success or what the deal is. And so, if you have a property, a product like Lion King, that was hugely successful when it came out. And it's 25 years later, and you've got a whole new audience. That's a little bit more of a sure thing. And you've got a new way of making it. Then yeah, I I would I would go ahead and try it too. You know, it's a and, and sure enough, Lion King made 1.1 billion dollars. That's billion with a B. Around the world. And some people don't. You know, they they. They didn't agree with it, but Disney's laughing all the way to the bank. And I'm sorry, but yes, it's it is about the money. Disney is a business, and they're there to they're there to make money. There. 
like this little guy. Hey there. Hi. Uh, any word on that redraw series uh, that this dream mentioned previously? It sounded fun. The redraw series? Redraw. Was that from the previous dream? I don't the know. Or, or I'm not sure I know what they're talking about. Oh, you know what? Uh, you know what Vedanta and I are talking about doing. Hmm. I don't know what Nick hasn't even heard this. We bought these chips that are oh, supposed to be mm. like the hottest chip in the world. Uh, Let uh, me go uh, get one. No. No, no, I'm not going <laughs> to eat it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a chip that's a. It's a single chip, and it's supposed to be like the hottest in the world. And the idea is to do a live stream while, like, after taking the whole thing and trying to do a live stream while suffering the hotness of this chip. So that is the whole idea to that. You got put away. I don't know. Vedanta put them away somewhere. I don't know where they are. But... It's every chip comes in its own little box. It's one chip, <laughs> and, you, and it's supposed to be the hottest chip on the planet. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to try to eat a chip and draw at the same time. You wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get it to last. Maybe Nick will come over. He'll eat a chip. Hey Aaron, would you use a 16-inch Cintiq uh, for animation too, or do you think it would feel too cramped? No, I think it'd be fine. I've done it when, I, when we've been on the road. I've used it. <coughs> Excuse me. No, that's not the Corvid. It's not the Corona. 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 Uh, have you seen the uh, new Mulan yet? The new Mulan? The new Mulan. It's not out yet. They haven't released it yet. It's I don't a, work for it Disney seems anymore. That Tony Bancroft really liked the new Mulan movie. movie. Uh, what do you think of the last trailer with the soldiers running up the walls? I don't know. I can't. You know, I don't. I, I don't put a lot of uh, judgment into a film based on the trailer because I've seen. Movies that I thought looked terrible with the trailer, and I saw the movie, and it was great. And then, and then the opposite. I've seen movies that look great from their trailer, and obviously, and they're just terrible. Well, Tony probably saw it because he was co-director of the original, so that's probably how he saw it. Oh, can't see the screen. Dustin, they just what? said they can't see the screen. Oh, my mistake. Pay attention, Dustin. There we go. The Lion King was visually beautiful, but the movie overall wasn't the wasn't the best. It was weird how they made the characters more monotone. Well, they made them more realistic, that's for sure. I don't know about monotone. But Yeah, it was definitely a, a there was definitely an artistic choice there. I think I think that artistic choice maybe um limited their the ability for the characters to emote in the same way that we were able to do on the Lion King uh, when it was hand drawn there is this one of your forest creatures from part two from part two Made for the uh, fantasy. Oh, maybe for the fantasy creature pack that, or, or course that I did. That was fun to create, wasn't it, Dustin? Oh yeah. We went out and shot a lot of stuff out on location. Eric, do you think it's okay to have periods of time where you mainly do studies and copies of other artists? Of course, absolutely. That's a time of growth and learning. Yes. 
It's okay to do anything. It's okay to stop drawing for a while if you want. Why not? YouTube question, is it bad if I'm approaching painting with digital media rather than traditional? Nothing's bad as long as you're creating. Nothing's bad as long as you're creating. It's got it's it's on uh, tweening versus frame by frames. Um, I'm, I'm assuming tweening is the is, in between. Is, yeah, I know, but it's the uh, it's the computer version of doing it, which I think I think always looks mechanical. So I'm not a huge fan of it. Whoops, there it goes. Um, Nick says, "Can you tilt your webcam down just a hair? You keep cutting off half your face when you lean in to draw. How about this?" <laughs> Why cut off the ponytail? Because it was driving me nuts, eh? You're driving you nuts, dude. You're driving me nuts, eh? I cut my ponytail off like a year and a half ago. Give or take. Maybe even longer than that. Maybe the two years ago? Yeah, it was a long... Like, when did you cut... I think about two years ago. Well, no, I, I did it in December, a year and a half ago. I had long hair for 25 years, and I just got tired of it. I donated it every, every uh, about every four years. I would cut it off and grow it out again. But uh, I decided to go the opposite this time. Man, this feels good. Can you hear that? Listen. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sandpaper on your head. Yeah. The redraw series was when viewers would submit work and Aaron critiques and improves was mentioned long ago. Oh, um, yeah, we haven't we haven't followed up on that. We're so kind of deeply immersed in trying to get content done right now. And uh, and I want to get I want to get back over to uh, Snow Bear as well. So that's the biggest thing we're focused on is trying to get more content and uh, Snow Bear. And we've got some really good artists that we're pulling in as well. I think I can announce this because we've already decided that we're going to do it with him. I think, Nick. I hope I'm not being too premature here. But we've got um, we've got a new sculpting and modeling course coming out. And um, it's going to be great. And it's by my good friend Tony Cipriano. Um, he did a lot of our maquettes uh, at Disney for our movies. Uh, he's an incredible traditional sculptor and digital sculptor who's currently working for Disney and uh, and Universal. I think he was he still with Disney or is he at Universal now? He might be at Universal now. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But um, we finally lassoed him in. We've been trying to get Tony for a couple of years now. And uh, we finally got him. We pulled him in. Question. Have you saved? No. No, I haven't. Uh, do you think it, that it's is really necessary to know all fundamentals to be a to be a pro? Yes. Uh, depending on the fundamentals that you're talking about, but whatever the field is, yes. Elf and Buddy. Uh, did, uh, Twitch question. Did you show the photo you're drawing from? I got here late. Uh, okay, latecomer. I'll, I'll, I'll stop the show just for you. Here we go. Uh, this is the photo we're using. So this is a photo that Dustin shot. I'm changing it around a little bit, pushing the character 
a little here and there. Just a touch. Just a touch. Just a touchy. Bigger eyes, all that kind of stuff. YouTube question. What do you think of companies removing, uh, releasing movies directly to consumers during COVID? How would you have felt had one of the movies you worked on skipped theater release? You know, I think it's time to, re to think differently in the way that we consume our content. I think we've, we have grown up with theaters and, uh, but with the advent of TVs that are basically the size of a movie theater screen, you know, I've got a, I've got an 82 inch TV. Uh, I know not everyone has huge TVs, but you know, with the ability to do that and streaming services, you know, you got to think too that, you know, movie companies, movie theater, uh, movie companies, when they release to the theater, um, the theater gets a huge cut of that. So movie companies potentially are going to make more money releasing them if it's a good film, releasing them, you know, directly to us, and we do purchases. You know, some people are complaining about, you know, some of the some of the movies like Trolls being a twenty five dollar purchase. Yeah, but you go to the movies and you spend fifty bucks with everyone there. Are you paying attention, Dustin? Yes, I am. All right, right on. See you over there, texting your girlfriend and stuff. No, I'm texting Austin. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Texting your sister and stuff. So here I've got the, uh, this little bunny coming up. I'm just about ready to color. Hey Austin, we're making homemade calzones tonight for dinner. Come on over. It's Friday. It's Friday, people. Not that it matters during quarantine. Uh, will you be able to apply the techniques from traditional sculpture to digital? Yes. Yes, it's a lot of the same thinking, same compositional thinking. You're still thinking in 3D, right? Right. For those of you that want to be modelers, this is, this is going to be the course to get. It's going to be really good. Uh, what system are you working on? This is a Photoshop being run on a Mac Pro and using a 32-inch Cintiq Pro, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Doing a set over overview. Nick has a, a good point. Nick, uh, it's his opinion, but he thinks that comedies will suffer a bit from home distribution. Laughing with a group of people in a theater, basically, is what he's saying. Laughing with strangers is a neat experience that you can't reproduce at home. I think I agree with you on that. Although I laugh, I get I laugh pretty easy. I, I get entertained pretty easy, and I laugh at the stupidest stuff. So, but I I think you know I think in general I think you're right. Do you know where I can find sketchbooks with gray paper? Yes, Strathmore. Just go on Amazon. Go on Amazon and type in Strathmore Gray Gray Paper. Strathmore Gray. Uh, let me see. It's. Uh, Dick Blick is another one. So Strathmore Toned Gray, right here. Strathmore Toned Gray. Uh, this one's nine by twelve. This is my favorite size right here. So that's that's the one to get. I haven't even started drawing on this one yet. Brand new. Yeah. Branch blank and new. Branch blank and new. Oh, you know what? I haven't shown anybody these yet. Look at I got got these in the mail the other day Here for the me. for the uh, birds of prey course. This is a red-tailed hawk skull. It's a replica, but very perfect replica. See that little circular bone there in the eye that only they and some fish and reptiles have? It's called the scleral bone. It's what the eye sits in. A lot of birds, hawks, eagles, birds of prey, they can't move their eyes like we can. So they have to turn their heads. That scleral bone holds their eyes in place. This is a peregrine falcon. 
that pretty neat yeah peregrine falcon so all these I'm using as teaching aids for when I'm teaching the uh, how to draw birds of prey course Aaron can you recommend a course for Photoshop that can help teach us when to use masking overlay and other skill layers um, I don't know that I can I do have a painting in Photoshop course but I don't use those and so I don't really cover that um, I'm not I'm, I'm sorry you might want to check schoolism they might have something there with Bobby Chu I love those guys they're the ones that do Lightroom or Lightroom Lightbox <laughs> every year which is a big uh, convention unfortunately this year it's been it's been postponed until next year uh, because of the that damn virus. Any that, word on that CTN? Damn virus. Too? What's that? Is CTN the same way? Uh, they haven't announced if CTN is done or not. I really hope it stays open. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here right now and do a little. Just a little. A little. I'm yeah. just going to lay down a layer of color and then we're going to work our textures over the top of that. Now that you turned your bar in the backyard into a house, will <laughs> you build a new bar? Um, no. I don't have any room. <laughs> any more room back there. Um, but we, I mean, we spend most of our time outdoors around our fire and all that stuff anyway. Um, so and then when my father's not there, he's only going to be there half the year. You know, that might become our little party house. Have you ever tried rotoscoping uh, in any of your drawings? Uh, no, I've never, I, I don't do any rotoscoping. I've done a lot of live action reference, but never rotoscoped. For those of you that don't know, rotoscoping is basically tracing over live action drawings to get the animation. Yeah, or live action uh, film to get the animation. Yeah, it's also used in the visual effects um, department of live action movies to um, cut people out or add add uh, backgrounds in into the back, things like that. Yeah. And what not. And what not. And also it's what help, helps uh, create 3D depth. 3D. 3D. Whoa, we got a whole bunch of stuff up there. Uh, YouTube question. Aaron, I worked on a 13 HD Cintiq, the old one with acrylic screen. Do you think it would be wise to use a screen protector to avoid scratches over time? Yeah, probably. If that's what you have right now. Definitely. It would be wise. It wouldn't. It definitely wouldn't hurt it, as long as it doesn't dim your screen. You know, you want your screen as bright as possible. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Love how's you, it going? Man. Hey. As someone who had directed his own animated movies, what kind of unique stresses did you have to endure? Were there situations uh, that were so overwhelming that you were almost unable to cope? If so, how did you overcome them? Um, no, I don't, I don't know. I mean, working as a new director, first-time director, there's a lot of insecurities that I went through. And, and I really struggled with creating the story because uh, I, didn't, I didn't know as much as I thought I did when I, when I dove into it. And so, um, but what was wonderful is I had a great executive team and I had a really great creative team to lean on. And so that was a big help for me. Um, you know, being responsible for a budget of $90 million, that was stressful. Um, I had a hard time, not, a, I, which I shouldn't say a hard time. I didn't have a hard time with the budget. The budget actually came out great, but just knowing that you've got that responsibility, you know, can keep you awake at night. Uh talking about the uh, skull they showed earlier you posted on Instagram a drawing based on this skull right uh, not those but some other ones yes oh yeah the, the birds of prey I, I, yes yeah, the those. birds of prey yep I did let me blow that up a little bit so you can see a little better 
Wasn't Thumbelina rotoscoped? Parts of it. Not all of it. I think a lot of it, though, was um, reference, reference video recordings. Yeah, some yeah. of it was rotoscoped, though. Yeah. I think they've also done that for, like, Anastasia for oh. certain bits. There's yeah. all kinds of, like, all the, yeah. all the stuff in... Uh, Snow White? Uh, Snow White, where they're dancing. Yeah. You know, that's all rotoscoped. Um, or referenced, heavily referenced, I should say. Yeah. Because for a lot of a lot of scenes, uh, they would they would make a set and they would record uh, a video of the scene so that way the artist can see the movements and everything, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Aaron, I'm a big fan and sculptor from Brazil. Sadly, couldn't see you when you came here. Did you ever try to venture on sculpting? Also, I'm a big fan of Kent Mountain. Did you work with him at Disney? I did work with Kent. Uh, I like Kent's a great guy. He's an incredible artist. Um, him and Tony Cipriano. You know, I was just saying earlier how we're bringing Tony Cipriano in. Those two guys uh, were great. And they and they're really uh, good friends too. And uh, I di I didn't venture too much into uh, sculpting myself. I'd love to. It's just something I never. I never took up because I've been so doing everything else, you know, doing other things. And so I just, uh, something I'd like to do though, for sure. When you worked at Disney as an animator, how much emphasis uh, did you put on getting the minor details just right, like keeping the shapes consistent between drawings? Uh, was most of that detail work handed off to an assistant? Uh, no, you know, as far as keeping sizes sizes consistent and all that, that's not really considered detail work. That's considered, you know, just baseline part of your job. Um, you know, as far as finishing out parts of the drawings that don't necessarily need to be there, sometimes that's considered detail work, and I would definitely do that. Uh, but uh. I'm just looking at some. I'm looking at this stuff. I'm going to. Uh, uh, so yeah, you know, as far as handing stuff off to assistants, I would have to. I'm, sometimes I would just do partial drawings and let them finish them out. Other than that, I, I did make sure that all the details that needed to be there were there. Um, I am going to do this. I'm going to copy that. Let's switch over to my fur brush. And uh, you're going to dig this brush. There they are, this one, shiny fur. Let's get this one. At first, I'm just going to go here. That's too long. So what I've done is I've locked the layer. Let me blow this up so you can see it a little better. Where does the budget for an animate, animated film come from? Well, it depends, um, depends on the company. A company like Disney, they, they have their own budget. You know, if you're, but smaller companies need to get money from other sources. And so people will invest in movies. And that's, you know, that's what I, when I left Disney, I was involved in doing that type of thing where I had to convince people to give us, uh, Investors to help us to get the films made as a director. That was part of my part of what we did. I would pitch to to uh, to investors, and then the executive that owned the company would then go and handle it. Unfortunately, the company that I worked for handled it wrong. So you can see here, I'm creating this fur. Think about building my own desktop from scratch for my 16-inch Cintiq uh, pen display. Any re any recommendations for powering animation programs? Um, when it comes to that, uh, I would say for the CPU, go with a Intel i7. Um, I7s are really good for processing that sort of stuff. Uh, when it comes to RAM, uh, I would say 18 gigs minimum. But at least go 32. Uh, the more RAM you have, the better. 
And when it comes to a graphics card, I'll go with um, the RTX series because they have studio drivers for them now. Um, on a budget, go with like the 2060, but if you can afford it, go for the 2080. Um, and yeah, so I'd say for a good, a good working uh, PC, you can do it for like a good 1500 to two grand. What if he wants to go Apple? Oh, you just took, wants you to just, build. You just took that, that to question build. right over, didn't you? He wants you to just build. jumped right in there. Apple doesn't build. <laughs> you can't build your own Apple. If you so, want to replace one new part, you have to get a whole new model. So one of the cool things about these brushes that I've created, these fur brushes, and I've got lots of different textures, um, is they, they go with the flow that you draw in the direction that you draw they're directional fur brushes. So depending on the direction that I'm drawing, I can create the fur flowing in that direction. See? Has the budget for digital animation uh, decreased from traditional paper animation? No. They've increased. Really? Yeah. Pixar movies are $200 million now, as they cost. Is it because like they have to pay for the uh, licensing? Oh, there's of the no, it's, it, no. It's just a creation of the films. Oh. Dustin, not true. New Mac Pro is upgradable and fully customizable. That's the one that we're getting. Yeah, but how much is it for the base? That I don't know. A lot. Where can I get those hairbrushes? At my website, CreatureEyeTeacher.com. And you can buy them for $1. These fur brushes are only $1. And there's like 50 of them. Or 40 of them or something like that. So, I've laid down the base. Right there. Now, the other thing we can do... I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to grab... Where is it? This one here. I like this one. This is... A, a different one altogether. And what brush specifically is that one that you're currently using? It's uh, just another hairbrush. Uh, what goals or courses are coming up uh, uh, for your projects? Like what? What well, are, you, what are right, the upcoming goals and projects coming up? Uh, our upcoming, we're trying to get a uh, a uh, Birds of Prey course done, and then after that, we'll be jumping over to Snow Bear and getting that going. Now, this is where the fur, the doing the fur brushes, yeah, gets kind of fun. So what I can do, because I want him to be kind of uh, in, in shadow, I can either paint over it or I'm going to, I'm going to just experiment a little bit. I'm going to go here and I'm going to change my blend mode on my brush to multiply. And what that's going to do is that we're going to create darker fur. Gabby's here. Hey, Gabster. Say, hey, guys, I'm at work in a uh, in a break. Just enough time to say hi and bye. <laughs> well, hi and bye. bye. So I'm just darkening it all now. And I can go in later and add highlights and text different textures to the fur that are outside kind of the, the, uh, the texture that I'm laying down. This creates a great base, what I'm doing. Yeah, Trevor Garcia says that um, when it came to budgets, uh, Klaus was 40 million. It exactly. Only, only cost about 20% of a Pixar movie. Exactly. The quality of the both isn't that apart. Exactly. Well, one of the things is Disney and Pixar have a habit of making their movies over and over again, you know, refining them and refining them and refining them. Whereas Klaus, they decided they want they they decided on the movie they wanted to make and they just made it. They made it once and they saved a lot of money by doing that. 
I don't think any either one is necessarily wrong or right. And I've seen studios that you know only made their movie once, and that what they ended up making was a pile of garbage. You know, sometimes you need to refine it and refine it and refine it, but um, they did amazing. Can the fur brushes work on Procreate? Yes. Three D rendering is expensive, as well as on uh, big budget CGI animated films. Yes. There we go. Who were some of your artistic heroes and animators when you were a young artist? You know, all of the nine old men I really admired. Milt Call. Ollie Johnson, Frank Thomas, they were just incredible artists to me. And um, Glenn Keane, who taught me animation, is still one of my artistic heroes. And uh, now watch this. I'm going to uh, change the blend mode again. And we're going to change the color just slightly. We're going to get some interesting effects. Um, and then there's other artists out there you know, in the in the painting world that I've always admired. So I'm, g I'm going to rim light it a little bit. When drawing details, do you still draw from shoulder or is this uh, for more large shapes? Um, I try to draw, yeah, I mean, it's usually, it tends to fall into large shapes, but I try to draw from the shoulder as often as I can. Here's the never-ending debate. Uh, copying other drawings for practice and only for practice. Is it right or wrong? Why would it be wrong? It's it only wrong that. if you're trying to make money out of it. Yeah, but why? Yeah, exactly. Why would it be wrong if you're learning? It's not wrong. There we go. So now I can put a layer over the top of this and we can we can do some more uh, color. But right now, I'm going to put a layer on top and we're going to add some color to our little elf guy. Twitch question. Hey there, what it... Uh, what it requires to be a good animation director. How can I become one? Well, it takes years of uh, understanding the, the craft, first of all. Whoops. On the wrong blend mode. Normal. Um, on it. Hold on one second. Um, you don't just jump into being a uh, an animation director. You need to understand, you know, there's a lot that goes into being a director. Story, understanding story, being a good writer, um, understanding acting, music. All of those are what go into being an animation director. And being able to direct people, being able to work with people. You know, those are all things that, that are going to help you along the way. I, I worked at Disney for over 10 years doing a lot of different things as, a, as an animator, designer, character, uh, storyboard uh, artist before I ever became a director. And that's working in the professional world. So it's just, you know, it's, I get this question a lot from young people and yeah, it's a journey. You have to, it's a journey that you're going to have to take to get there. It's something you evolve to. Uh, YouTube question. Do you know any good materials, books, courses, etc. for writing a story? Yes. Um, there's a book called Story by Robert McKee. 
uh, there's one called Save the Cat uh, by uh, um, uh, uh, or Dustin, look up Save the Cat script rating. Get off your phone. I literally just picked it up. Save the Cat screen screenplay? Yeah. But, but screen of uh, writing instruction, whatever. Book. Who's it by? I'm, dra I'm drawing a blank. There's several out there. Those two are my favorite. Uh, Story by, by Blake Snyder. Blake Snyder, thank you. Save the Cat by Blake Snyder, and Story by Robert McKee. Those will help you immensely in uh, helping uh, getting you developed as an artist, a uh, writer. Which books did you study for art? I didn't really. <clears throat> I just did the art. You can study as much as you want, but you're not going to truly learn until you do. I got it. Do you feel there's more hype around working for Disney than there should be? No, I mean, I, I think working for Disney was wonderful. I wouldn't trade it for the world, and I thought it was, you know, it definitely was great. I think a lot of pe young people that are wanting to get into Disney are making it, it's like it's, if they don't get there, then they can't work anywhere else, and that I think is wrong. You know, it's hard to get into Disney, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just going to be tough. And so, if you can't, you know, set a wider net. You know, there's a finite number of people that work at Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Sony, you know, all the major companies. There's a lot of other stuff out there. It's a big world. It's a big, big world. Hey, Aaron. Uh, would you usually go in so much detail in the fur when you paint in oils? Cheers. No. No, not usually. That's this one I was just, I just wanted to demonstrate my fur brushes today. There we go. Uh, YouTube question, do you use any video reference for animating characters movement or lip sync? I never use video reference for lip sync. Um, I do sometimes for complicated movement, I will. I'll shoot it myself. Uh, I don't rotoscope though, but I will, I will uh, use reference. Absolutely. What makes a good, uh, uh, Instagram question, what makes a good story for animation? That's a good question actually. Um, I think a good story for animation is something that is universal, can be told from, you know, to a 90-year-old to a 9-year-old, and everyone's deeply engaged. I think it's got to be something that cuts across cultural barriers. It's got to go, it's got to deal with universal issues. Um, it's got to have great character. It's got to have a great world. Um, it's got to transport you. It's got to be emotional. It's got to be funny. It's got to be. It's got to make you cry. It's got to make you laugh. It's going to make you sit on the edge of your seat. It's going to make you scared. It's got. It's well balanced in that sense. You know, all of those are things that I think make a great animated story. And then you have to execute it. You got to make it. So right now I'm still just laying in base color. That's all I'm doing right now. Do you believe that due to the tendency of realism in video games, that art and concept for video games can be considered an opposite to animation? No. 
Actually, I think there's a lot that's the same. And I think I think they're going to meet each other in the middle. I think animation is going to be more. Uh, a lot of technology is pushing towards more realism, and I think in the gaming world they're starting to find ways of being more playful too. Cuphead is an example of that. Yeah. Yeah, the technology. Of I'm so tired days. of this bug. Man, uh, Adobe has got a bug in their latest version of Photoshop that is really annoying. How do YouTube you question. Hey, Aaron, is it true that Lion King was a ripoff of Kemba, the anime? What's your take on this topic? Uh, no, it's not true. And I think there were similarities, but... Uh, it was written completely independent, and it wasn't. Uh, it's like saying, you know, Surf's Up was a ripoff of Happy Feet. It just it didn't happen. How did you learn to draw? I did it. I drew. I never stopped drawing. That's how I learned. I did lots and lots of drawing. I've drawn all my life. I love to draw. Oops. And um, and it's just something I am passionate about, and I do it a lot. And, and like anything else, if you do it a lot, you get better at it. I'm 52 years old, and I've been drawing since I was two years old. So that gives me 50 years of drawing that I've done. <laughs> Something bugging you, huh? What's that? Something bugging you. Yeah. Yeah, this bug in the software is buggy. How do you choose your color palette? Do you have a, a clear vision of it in your mind before uh, starting the illustration? Usually I do. And I, it, it, to me, it's all about mood. I'm looking for a certain mood. And um, I think in terms of analogous colors, what goes together, uh, warm and cool, purity of color. Do you have any uh, courses for composition and perspective? I do. I've got a course on perspective, not necessarily composition yet, but definitely one on perspective where I, I talk about one point, two point, three-point perspective. I talk about doing renderings and in, 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 uh, scale in, in perspective. I talk about all kinds of different uh, methods of creating perspective. Yeah, of course, a composition would definitely be a fun one to do. Yeah. There's a great uh, book. Um, oh, on it. There's that bug again. By uh, William Went who is a California light landscape painter uh, on perspective. There we go. So I've got the basic, this basic uh, color in there. Let's get some of this grass in. Do you think 4K is essential for current digital artists? Um, not necessarily. I mean, for us, for our video that we shoot, we, we're starting to do everything in 4K now. And when, you would only need 4K if you want to see like every little, every, every teeny tiny little detail. Or like if you want to zoom in real, real up close. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how detailed you want your images to be, right? Right. I can't even imagine what my my photos would look like if I saw on a 4K screen. Because every well, time I edit this my this is a 4K screen, right? I believe so. Yeah. Because every time I see no, I'm saying it is. Uh, I <laughs> bad, bad, bad. I was saying that I I only own a, a 1080p screens. Oh, at gotcha. Home. 
And so whenever I edit my my photos, I'm I'm seeing it in a 1080 p screen, and so I don't know what it will look like on 4K. Right. Yeah. But sure. I would like that at some point. So just adding some grass here. Right now it's just one one color. Aaron. 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 How does Disney handle so many different styles of each artist and make it look always the same style? I mean, every artist has their own unique stroke. Yeah, well, it's up, it's up to us to make sure that it all feels like what we're creating comes from the same world. So that's really up to the artists. You know, if you can't do that, if you can't adjust your style to match someone else's, then you don't belong there. So that's one of the things we had to do was make sure that we could we could change up our styles that includes animation we had to change our animation styles from from picture to picture you know all of that you know it's funny is um on youtube uh, there's a um there's a channel called game grumps yeah and they've done a couple of videos where They've taken a, a, an audio clip of, of one of their scenes, yeah. of them just talk, randomly talking, and and people um, have come different uh, learning animators have come together and make um, like fan fan made animations out of them. But the thing was like each every every other camera shot is done by a different animator and they do it in their own style that's cool and so it creates like this own unique personality to it and i always thought that was really cool twitch question can you force yourself to like the process of drawing i feel like i'm missing out on that part of my progress um i don't know <laughs> it's a good question uh I, I i've always loved drawing so i don't i don't know i've never had to force it on myself Do you go through different nibs when you draw digitally? No. And this new this new Cintiq, I've never even changed the nib on it. Oh, really? Yeah. I use this, the plastic ones because the glass on this is a different texture than my old Cintiq. Recently you said that uh, you feel like you're artistic style is starting to evolve in new ways. Can you explain specifically how you think it is changing and growing? I think maybe I think maybe it's just it's just it's a mental perception I have. I don't know that it's it's hard for me to put into words as far as a look what I'm talking about, but it's the way I approach, it's the way I think about what I'm drawing that I feel is evolving. becoming more natural um, less labored you know even at my age you can you can you know you can get better you can just get better you can learn you know for realistic animal portraits how do you paint the eyes it depends on the animal, right? It's funny because I'm going right to the eye. <laughs> Speaking of eyes. <laughs> hey, Arrow. I think he meant Aaron. Uh, could you make a video showing your art setup? Uh, we could do that. We could definitely do that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm going to start working in here now, getting this guy a little... What's going on here? This is kind of weird. Normal. Hmm. Hello, Aaron and Dustin. Uh, do you know any good books for animation? There's the. Uh, I'm um, doing that. Huh? 
Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to figure something out right here. <laughs> there must be so I must have drawn on this. I did. There it is. Layer four. Layer four. Layer four was screwing me up. What is layer four? Oh, it's the drawing layer. I want to be on top of the drawing layer. That's what I want. Ready for the question? Yeah, sorry. No worries. Uh, do you know any good books for animation? Yes, The Illusion of Life. Yeah, Frank Thomas... Oh, there's that bug again. <laughs> Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. It's that book right up there. Uh, the Animator's Survival Book. Or survival handbook or whatever by Richard Williams. Are you using the mouse or a graphics uh, tablet to draw? You're currently using a. I'm using a stylus. I'm drawing. Let's go to there. Yep. Yeah, it's a 32 inch Cintiq Pro by Wacom. So now that I've got the texture, the fur textures in, I can come in pretty much just enhance them with drawing over them. It is turning, this uh, image is turning out really cute. Thank you. It'll get cuter. Yeah, the elf is reminding me a lot of the um, uh, the old King of the Elves concept art. Yeah, that's where I. That's kind of what I had in my head. But uh, I'm gonna let's get that eye looking really glassy, shall we? This is where it's gonna get fun. We'll do some nice illusions in here. I never name the layers I create in Photoshop. Do you name them generally? Sometimes I do. It's a good habit to get into. So basically the eye is reflecting the world around it. And so it's going to reflect some of the sky. Do you prefer animating or illustrating? Yes. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it depends on my mood. I love both. And so I, I'll, I'll do both. Say dear, bud. Thanks, bud. I'm all out of questions. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. All right, we're gonna set this to multiply. Have you used Procreate? And so, what are you? What do you? What's your opinion on that? I love Procreate. Matter of fact, I've got an entire course on my website at creatureartteacher.com that where I teach uh, my approach to Procreate. I always get stuck at the detailing step. Do you have any suggestions? Uh, since right now you're at the detailing stage of this piece. Yeah, keep it all in perspective. You know, you don't want to get hung up on it. Put a little blades of grass in the, in the reflection. See that? See that? Little <laughs> blades of grass? She, yeah, I, I see all the blades. <laughs> Dust blades. So, yeah, you just want to... Um, jump around. That's one of my recommendations. Jump around. Jump, 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 jump around. Well, one of my recommendations is to don't stay in any one area too long, especially when you're doing your detailing. <laughs> oh God, you guys are quackers. I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> yes, we can be a couple of quackers. You just drop one. Oh, 
<laughs> I thought he just dropped an air biscuit. It's rabbit season. <laughs> I think Don Bluth has uh, also a book about animation. Oh, I'm sure he uh, does. Have you have you read it? And so, what's your opinion? I haven't. That? No, I haven't read it. So you got that? We got that eye coming going pretty well. So now, what I want to do is I want to get some of these hairs. I've been going through a lot of boxes of family keepsakes and feeling inspired. How important is memory and sentiment to your work? I think it's everything. I think it's extremely important. Since I'm a subscriber to Creature Art Teacher, uh, is there a specific method for downloading fur brushes directly to procreate on iPad, on iPad, on iPad Pro? Uh, I don't know. Um, that one we're going to have to ask Nick. Nick, 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 Nick. Hey, Aaron, Nick, is it true that Lion King was a... Re oh, sorry, I went back forth, back there. <laughs> uh, YouTube question. What resolution and DPI uh, do you set? Uh, right now, this resolution is this is 20 inches by 16 inches and the resolution is 300 dpi do you have any tips on how to think about muscles squashing and stretching while animating uh not that i can just tell you i mean it's that's all part of you know, squash and stretch, that's all part of the, your fundamentals. And so, you know, your, the muscles are going to be part of whatever the, the body makeup is on the character that you're creating. It's going to be part of those masses, right? How many different brushes do you usually use? About two or three. That's about it. Seven. Seven. What's a recent animated movie that you think was very creative or unique? Oh, Klaus. I love yeah. Klaus. Yeah. Uh, have you used uh, Procreate to animate anything larger yet? No. have not. Hi Aaron. Uh, I'm curious, what is your opinion on puppet animation? I've been opposed at first until I saw the possibilities in Toon Boom. Uh, I think it's great. I mean, there's, I, I'm, I'm open to any medium of animation. I think there's a lot of great stuff out there. So I'm just I'm thinking about the lighting. The lighting is kind of on the and behind, behind and off to the left of our characters. So I'm putting my guy here in shadow. Did you draw more due to the recent lockdown? No, I actually was. I, I didn't have any. Nothing was any different because I I work from home all the time anyway. Well, there's a lot of construction involved. <laughs> yeah, we did do a lot of construction in my yard. This is true. Yeah. Because when you cl when you're clicking a mouse, you're setting one pressure pressure point of sensitivity, while while uh, with a with a pen or a um, stylus, you're you can. Do light strokes, or you can do heavy strokes, and that can affect the the size and, th and thickness of the uh, of the brush. You are correct, sir. So, yes. <laughs> hey, Aaron, will you make a dinosaur yet? 
Not yet. Almost yeah. there. I will, though. We will at some point. Um, if you're not doing live streams, do you usually listen to music while you're drawing? Yes. I do. Lots I of listen to a lot of blues. Easy listening. Easy listening kind of stuff. Stuff that's not going to get super distracting while I'm trying to draw. As a student in animation and illustration, do you recommend a specific country to begin a job um, and meet people? No. I don't know. I don't know. That's, a, that's an interesting question. A specific country for, for artwork? That I don't know. That's, a, that's an interesting question. I've never been asked that before. We need to look into that. Yeah. Uh, how long does it take you to learn a certain subject in depth? As long as it takes. I know that's a weird answer, but it's just, it's literally is, is as long as it takes. And I just, I, I pretty much immerse myself. So I, and I, I, I learn pretty quickly if I immerse myself deeply enough. Um, Unless it's technical, because Nick will tell you that I'm a, I'm a dummy when it comes to that stuff. Like when you when you say immerse, are you talking about like becoming a method actor for art? No, like just diving you in. A bird. <laughs> no, immersed. <laughs> you, you, you completely throw yourself at it, like you and Pokemon <laughs> when you were a kid. Oh my God. Uh, uh, would you ever consider doing a class on backgrounds? Uh, yes. And that's something that we actually are, I've been talking about, layout and background. I might not be the one to teach it, but we're definitely looking at it. Uh, for someone that has started getting paid work, uh, would you recommend the Cintiq 16 Pro over the non-Pro? Um, yes. If you're doing professional work, yes. Because it's, it's a higher res screen, I believe. Is like the pro version like a 4K while the I'm not sure standards. it's 4K, but I knew I think it's you know it's a, it's a higher higher resolution. Hi, Aaron. Hey. How often do you watch animated movies? Not very. Not very. Uh, do you still have time reading books? Uh, if so, what kind of books do you like? Uh, I don't read a whole lot. I used to read a lot more than I do now. Um, I can't stay awake long enough. I um. Right now, usually I'll listen to stuff uh, while I'm driving, and I like I like adventure, that sort of thing. Those are my favorite things to read or, or listen to. There we go. This bunny, he's got the grass in his uh, in his uh, mouth right here. So, got to is it this one? Did I ask a question about the world of digital arts? Uh, do you have any tips for those who are starting in this world of digital art? Yeah, I mean, just you got to dive in. Don't be afraid of it, and uh, be experimental. Try different things. Bring your own unique way of doing it to the table. You know, I when I started working digitally, all I knew was traditional. And so I brought my traditional way of doing things to the table, and it really helped me. Do you prefer Photoshop or Procreate? 
Um, probably Photoshop, just because I, I like, you know, that's, I'm used to working on the bigger screen. I still enjoy using Procreate when you're on the go. Yes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a layer on top, set it to multiply. I want to start modeling out this, this little buddy. I'm going to start with some warm shadows first. So do you ever uh, tune the music to the mood you're trying to create? Uh, not really. Sometimes. But not a whole lot. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to get a little bit of modeling in here. Twitch question. Roger Waters or David Gilmore? And also John Lennon or Paul McCartney? Uh... David Gilmore, uh, I can't choose between John or Paul. That's a tough question. Hey, Aaron, how do you come up with original art uh, or ideas? I feel like everything has already been done. No, that's not true. Think about like music. You think everything in music has already been done? And yet there's only 12 notes. That's all there is. There's only 12 notes. But there's so many different instruments. There's so many different ways of combining those notes to express those notes. You know, to make those notes sound. Well, art is the same way. It hasn't all been done. It hasn't even remotely been all done yet. You just got to find it. And you got to be willing to work for it. It's the lazy artist who's saying it's all been done. I'll tell you that. How about that? How about me sounding like an old man and scolding you? How do you avoid stiffness in your designs and poses? Like keeping the, di um, keeping the dynamic feeling. I was trying to find a fluid line of action. I always try to I always try to draw fluidly and find that fluid fluidity in the design. Uh, who's in a, is another uh, what do you prefer? Uh, Marvel or DC and why and what's your favorite superhero? Yeah it's funny I don't you know I, I was never much of a comic book reader at all. So it wasn't until the movies came out that I really even knew the difference between Marvel and DC. But uh, obviously, the Marvel films, I think, are a lot better than the DC films. Um, my favorite superhero... You know, it's always been the Hulk. I've always loved the Hulk, and I've always loved uh, Superman. Hmm. I would go Marvel, Captain America. Yeah, I knew you'd like Captain America. YouTube question. Hello, Aaron from Vancouver, Canada. What do you think of Hawaiian shirts and Hawaiian pizza? <laughs> well, first of all, I don't think you should ever put pineapple on pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but, that aside, uh, I love Hawaiian shirts. I, I have a bunch of Hawaiian shirts. Just don't happen to be wearing it today. I'm sure you, you could fill a whole other closet with all the Hawaiian shirts that you have. Yeah. People always said I was copying, I, I was trying to copy John Lasseter when I was <laughs> at work. And I was like, no, I know he's been wearing Hawaiian shirts, but I've been wearing them a long time too. <laughs> when you're doing what resolution in DPI did you set? I already did that one. Would you ever consider uh, I did that one? Okay. Can I, can I speak now? Yeah, go ahead. When you're doing the shadow layer, uh, you set it up, you set it to multiply. Do you change the opacity of the brush? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Now, what studios have you worked at? I worked at Disney. Then I worked for Digital Domain. Well, that's it. 
But then you also um, freelance for the uh, for that one commercial. Yeah. Was that his? Was that a studio as well? Well, no. It's, they or were an ad agency. When creating anthropomorphic animals, do you have any tips on combining um, human and or animal anatomies together? Yeah, if you know the anatomy, then you might want to put corresponding parts together. You know, a bird's wing and a human arm. Or a bat, you know, the fingers on, on a bat's wing with the human fingers on a, on a human. You know, it's things like that when you understand what, in the comparative sense, where everything goes. Of the three stooges, which one's your favorite? Uh, I would say Curly. Yeah, uh, I was going to say Curly. Certainly. Mo is always too mean. He's always too angry. Yeah. <laughs> Nick says, I disagree. Of course you disagree, Nick. You always disagree. Hawaiian pizza is great. If it's fresh pineapple, it's the best. The canned stuff is no good. I love pineapple. I just don't want it on my pizza. I'll eat it. I'll eat anything. But I won't have to enjoy it. So I'm just adding some variation in the fur. Why did you leave Disney? Well, that's a long, that's a long answer. Long but, story. But basically, I was with Disney for 21 years. But towards the end, uh, in 2005, Dustin's mother, my wife, um, she was diagnosed with cancer, with breast cancer. And, um, and we fought it and fought it. I was trying to make a movie, another movie while I was there while she was sick but we you know obviously we I couldn't do that and so we we did a lot of work from home and uh, but I I kept trying to take care of her and and and, it's, and ultimately she didn't make it and she she passed away on uh, March 7th March 11th of 2007 and it destroyed me and uh, I tried to go back to work, but I couldn't. I just couldn't bring myself to even want to make movies anymore. It, it seemed so pointless, and I struggled with it for about I don't know two years trying to make this movie after my wife died. And you know, Dustin and Austin were they were having a hard time, and it was just hard all the way around. And eventually, I kind of failed at making the movie. I just didn't, I, I, my heart wasn't in it. And John Lasseter and Ed Catmull, they took me off the film. And, you know, they said, you know, we're, we're taking you off. And that's when I realized that I had really fallen a long way and I needed to find who I was again. And um, I needed to redefine myself. My, my world, my life, everything had always been defined by my family and, and my job. You know, namely my wife and my children and my kids were having a hard time and my wife was gone and my job had fallen apart. So I really didn't know who I was and what I was doing. And so when they took me off the movie, that's when I realized in about 10 seconds I needed to start over. And so they said, hey, we'd like you to stay and I said, actually, I quit. And, and so that was the end of my 21 years at Disney. I wasn't mad at them. I actually would have done the same thing. It actually, it, it gave me a kickstart to get my life back together again. And so that, that was the start of a new beginning. And, uh, and my healing process, you know, from being so heartbroken. And we are able to, and, and, and spending more time with my my family, Austin and Dustin and 
and we're closer now for it, don't you think, Dustin? Yeah. So there you go. I bet you didn't expect that answer. <laughs> Long story indeed. What's your least favorite food? My least favorite food. Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't. Uh, I mean, I, there's certain organ meats I don't want to eat. <laughs> Like, like brains, tripe and brain. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't Eyeball. know. Uh, but I pretty much eat anything. Will this painting maybe available on your website or for download? Uh, we can we can make it that way. Probably. Hey Aaron, what sort of warm-ups or practices do you recommend for getting the creative juices for? The act of drawing, just drawing, just sit down and start drawing. You know, that's the only thing I can think of. Reading, uh, being inspired by film, movies. Do you ever paint your values in uh, first and grayscale? No. I've tried it. And I can see, you know, some people enjoying doing it that way, but it's not for me. Do you use blending modes for highlights and shadows? Yes. I use multiply for my shadows and overlay for my highlight areas. Uh, does what? Go ahead. Does the Cintiq Pro tend to heat up uh, a lot when you're working with larger files? No, not that I've noticed. I haven't noticed that at all. Marvin on YouTube asks, how much of your typical workday is spent drawing versus doing admin work to run your business. This is the beauty of my business. I have an amazing partner named Nick Birch and he handles all that stuff so that all I have to worry about is creating new content and talking to you guys and all that kind of stuff. Nick handles all of that. Nick is like the biggest godsend that I've had when we started this, when I started this business. Yes, I'm, I'm praising you up and down, Nick. Nick is awesome. Everybody needs Nick. <laughs> what people don't realize is that Nick is a, oh, God, there's that bug again. Nick is a, uh, has a degree in animation as well. He's a good animator. So we're going to be doing Snow Bear together. Are you still friends with Glenn Keane? Um, I wouldn't say we call each other all the time, but we, uh, we when uh, when our paths cross, we, we do. We talk. Just that our paths don't cross as much as they used to. Have you ever done a fan commission? No. Not really. Have you ever made your own paint? <laughs> no. I've never made my own paint. How did you paint that yellow light on the rabbit's back? I did that with uh, one of my fur brushes and overlay, or a, a color dodge. go. So I'm going to rotate this around and Who's your favorite artist at the moment? My favorite artist at the moment. Um, there's a painter that I, I, I've never seen him do a bad piece. His name's Jeremy Lipking. And uh, he's just an amazing figurative painter, and he does landscape, and just incredible. 
but there's a lot of great artists out there. I'd say Jeremy Lipking is probably one of my favorite living artists right now. Aside from Nick and Dustin, uh, do you have anyone else that works with uh, or for you? Yes, we have Stephen Coleman who writes code for the website to keep it running and making it more efficient. And he's awesome. He's been with us for a couple of years. Dustin, you've been with us for a couple of years. Yeah, about three years. I think we're coming up, up to four now. Yeah. That's crazy. Worst job you ever had. <laughs> no, this is actually my be the best job I ever had. <laughs> when will you do another animation streaming with your brother? It was cool. Never. I hate that guy. <laughs> He's a jerk. <laughs> uh, we'll do something soon. Matter of fact, we, uh, we're getting ready to record a course with him. Travis is going to be doing a course on... How to animate in Calipeg. Do you have an idea what the purpose of the ear notches are on so many animals like dogs, cats, uh, this rabbit? The ear notches there, those are tears. I mean, it's weird that they're in the same spot. I think it may have been shot at or something. But over the course of, the, of an animal's life, a lot of times their ears will get stuck on branches and thorns, or whatever. they'll just get torn. Elephants, and a lot of uh, elephants are a lot of elephants are identified that way by their ear tear patterns. Do you prefer digital drawing of pencil uh, or pencil and paper? It depends on my mood. I like I love them both. Uh, Twitch question, what would be your advice to an animation animator student? What would you tell the younger you? You know, the biggest thing is patience. I think that's the biggest thing that people need to have nowadays. You know, I call this the American Idol generation where everything, everyone's used to having everything instantly. Your in, in, instant information you can get on your phone and instant success on American Idol and all of that kind of stuff. I'm always talking about this. And the thing with animation is that it takes time to develop and cook and to get good at and you just got to take your time and be patient and let things happen in a when they're ready to happen and not before but also work hard work hard towards that goal of whatever it is that you might have <laughs> this is a great employee where did you find him? Should give him a raise or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I happened to <laughs> happened to find him. Find him in uh, in uh, a hospital bed. Yeah, I was designed and fell built, out of his mother. I was <laughs> built back in 1990. Yeah, I happened to be laying next to his mother when he fell out. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, "Hey, there's a future employee." And I. And I stood up going, hi, how are you? <laughs> you know, you came out and you went, man, it was hot in there. With a with a dislocated shoulder. Yep, he, Dustin came out with a dislocated shoulder and two black eyes. Like I had a fight with Mike Tyson in there. Yep, you were a little big. <laughs> uh, but before this, I was working um, up in Toronto. And... Uh, and right around the time that you and Nick were looking for someone to hire, I actually um, was let go of my of my of my job at that time, and that's when uh, I got brought on board. And you guys uh, helped me move on down, and and the first week I was supposed to work, I got sick. Oh yeah. And oh my god, I felt terrible. <laughs> I think that was the worst I ever, I was ever sick. Yeah, it was. You were pretty bad. But and that um, start with editing and 
and went on to um, cameraman and now I'll also stream manager, stream operator, and photographer. Yes, you are. Bye. 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 Trying to get a little bit of light coming through the those ears there. I gotta I gotta give some attention to my little elf guy. Twitch question, what we got oh, there we go. YouTube question, what's one of the most beautifully animated movies you've watched? Um, I think one of the most beautiful it wasn't quite a movie, but it was part of uh uh uh, uh oh my god, Fantasia two thousand. And it was the, the the springtime spirit. What was that? And the and the and the all the lava and everything coming out. Um, I was blown away by that. It was done by directed by the Britsy brothers, and it was some of the most beautiful animation I've ever seen in my life. And co talk about complex! It was just insanely complex. Oops, that's not what I want. Is it true the night sky in Africa is fully clear? No. It, it, it'll rain. Have you ever but seen the rains down in Africa? They're talking about the the night, <laughs> the the star, the starlight, like no light. Oh yeah, when when you see when this when it is a clear night, it's it's absolutely beautiful. Yes. All of your siblings artists? No. Really, just my my uh, my younger my younger brother and me. Have you ever seen the movies that you have made? And if yes, what did you think when you saw it? Have I seen the movies I made? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Of course. Uh, sometimes I liked them, sometimes I didn't. I cringe, you know, movies that I've directed, sometimes I, I cringe at, at parts of them because I know they could have been better. Ah, okay. Dustin, do you like to draw? Um... I used to for the longest time growing up, like up till high school, and after high school I just kind of slowed down until eventually I I hardly ever draw these days. I mean, I once in a while do like a graphic design for a title here and there, but that's kind of about it. I've kind of gone towards photography now. I made a new path. Carolyn, YouTube asks, how many layers do you use in a painting like this rabbit, Aaron? Uh, I'm going a little nuts with the layers today. Um, I don't know. I mean, there is nothing that's typical, really. Uh, a lot of times it'll be 20 or 30 layers. I'll consolidate layers, too. That's to do the voice of Arnold. How about you put that cookie down? <laughs> now! <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain the difference between Disney and Pixar? There's a, there's a difference? Well, I think there's definitely a stylistic uh, approach that's different. Pixar, I think, when they started, they purposely said, hey, we're not going to be doing any big musicals. Although they had music in their films, it's not some, It's not like a, like a Beauty and the Beast. They wanted to stand out a little differently in that way. Yeah, Disney was always known for their musical animations. Not always. Well, not well, all of them. Most of the time. It's, it's really, most of them. Yeah, I mean, but that's in the 90s. I mean, it wasn't always 
they weren't really considered. There's, you know, the the stuff from before had music in them, but they weren't really considered musicals. Well, like Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, yeah. Pocahontas, Beauty and the Beast. Yes. Oh my God, this bug is bugging me. Follow up on the movie question. Do you ever watch something you made cringe and then it seems to ruin most of the movie or artwork <laughs> not not that bad no but there's definitely things I'd like to go back and, and improve upon for, for sure how many megabytes is your file at the moment uh 834? Alright, yeah. Maybe you could add some tiny veins uh, in the ear of the rabbit since the sunshine is coming through. Yes, I'm going I'm actually going to do that. I'm uh I'm just looking actually to do this here. Twitch comment, I just bought your fur brushes for Procreate. They work great. Thank you. Hey, awesome. Hey, Aaron. I'm hey, person. I'm struggling to make my art look three-dimensional. Uh, do you have any tips that will help uh, my art not look so flat? It's really in the lighting. You have to have, you have to understand lighting. Form. Understand that form. Warm light, cool light, you know, all of that. I just happen to have a course on lighting, if you're interested. But once you can, once you get to that, then it really does help. How do you deal with fading the outlines? I draw over them. That's what I do. I draw over them like I'm going to do right now. I add a little bit more highlight. Actually, I want to go even brighter. Adobe, I'm begging you, please <laughs> fix this bug. How do you do with fading the outlines? You just ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any tips uh, to understand shortcuts? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. Like, like, like keyboard shortcuts, shortcuts? Yeah, like key keyboard shortcuts. Like, yeah, 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 just learn them. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to what to say other than that. You just got to learn them. If you could redesign one character, which would it be? Uh, one of my characters? I think so, yeah. Raja. Raja? Yeah. Uh, you sell prints on your website. But what kind of printer do you use for them? Uh, do you have any recommendations for printers if you're an artist wanting to sell prints? Um, the printer, I don't I can't remember what brand we have. Nick has it at the house. Uh, but it's a, uh, it's a large format. Oh, shoot. It's a large format printer. Uh, and it prints G. Clay prints. Very high definition. Uh, 
Um, you got to have good paper as well. Why redesign Raja? I just think it could have been better. I just think he could have been better. A little bit better. So I was a young I was a young young lad when I created Raja. And I'd I'd like to just go back and redo him. Oh. How do you stay patient when you're drawing? Years of practice. I had two kids. <laughs> I didn't notice. What's that bug that bo uh, bothered you from Adobe? It's hard to, it, well, everything, uh, uh, the brush all of a sudden goes completely opaque. It's very annoying. So here I'm just going to add little, little highlights on his berries. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny. By the way, when we watch Lion King or say Be Brother Bear, where can we see your work? I mean, as I understood, different artists do different characters, right? What characters did you work on? I created Young Nala for the Lion King. The original Lion King, not the new one. So when you see young Nala, you're seeing my work. And Brother Bear, I co-directed it, so I had something to do with everything in that movie. Aaron. Yes. How much a traditional animated film um, such as cell animation uh, would cost today and are any studios nowadays interested in traditional animations I'm not only uh, in the majors like Disney etc like I don't mean the just Disney like any well studio. nobody nobody's doing traditional like on paper and cell animation no one's doing that at all anymore it's, it's all a very GDP. old archaic way of approaching it yeah it's sure. there's much more efficient cost-effective ways and you know and getting better better results really um but you know there's studios like cartoon saloon and you know just amazing studios like that that are creating beautiful beautiful work my friend tom moore is uh, who directed Secret of the Kells and uh, Song of the Sea just finishing up directing Wolf Walkers that's 2D beautiful 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 yeah. uh, for your Instagram profile picture is that a fan art or did, or did you make that yourself I've made it myself <laughs> uh, which version of Photoshop do you use? The latest. The latest one. There. So I'm just, just hopping around adding some reflected light in the areas that could use it, giving it a little bit of form. The other thing I want to do is put some markings on him, on our little character. So I'm going to go in the blue.
Is there an animated film you would have liked to collaborate in, but you didn't have the chance to? Yes, Zootopia. That's always a fun movie. I bought three of your courses, but the videos don't open for some reason. What can I do? Uh, send an email to support at creatureartteacher.com and uh, they'll be able to help you out. <laughs> when I watched Lion King as a kid, I used to leave the TV room on all fours when it was all over, playing as a lion. I love that film. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, making little markings. This is a brush I made recently for uh, to put markings on an octopus. And I find that it's working pretty good for this. Are there any funny traditions between employees when you work in a studio? We had a lot of rubber band fights. Lots and, and lots of rubber band fights. And at Digital Domain, we had a lot of Nerf gun fights. Yeah. And our buddy and I, we, we had the most Nerf Nerf guns at our desk. We had full armories under, under our desks. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody was out of line, we would, we would give up the guns and we would play it out and ambush on the one person and just, <laughs> and just fire just a whole cloud of, of darts on the person. So let's get some color. You know, one of the things I've neglected to do is get any color in the background. I'm going to flop it around too. Do you have any tips or advice for developing your own style of drawing? Draw a lot. That's how you do it. That's really the only way you can do it is just drawing a lot. Um, the more you draw, the more you'll you'll develop your own style. Do you still animate? I certainly do. In fact, you're current. Uh, we're not currently at the moment, but we are in the middle of working on a uh, animated project that you're animating yourself. Yep, called Snow Bear. Or I'm trying to animate it myself. I have a feeling when I have to bring other people in. Before anybody asks, how's the progress on that going along, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> it's, in, it's on hold right now as we try to get other projects done. Alright, I got a big one here. Twitch question. Question for Dustin. I'm trying to upload traditional art online, but I only have a phone camera, not a scanner. Well, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus with a 12 megapixel dual pixel rear facing camera with an f1.7 lens work for good quality. I have no idea what this means for a camera. I don't have a chance to get a better camera at the moment, but I wanted to somehow sell quality traditional prints online. Thank you. Well, using your, I'll just say this real quick. Yeah. Using your, your camera phone to take prints to take pictures for prints if I'm understanding that right uh, is no good if you but you're, you're what you're saying is you want to just up, upload stuff online that's fine but I, I don't know uh, oh I just lost it we just lost the question I mean if you make um if you make like a makeshift stand for your phone to face it downward and you just and you set it up in a certain way and you just kind of just set one up, line it up, photo, repeat, and instead of doing it handheld, um, you'll have a you'll have a very nice and consistent stack of the images. I don't know how you would be able to merge them all together. Um, but for the but you will at least have um, all the images all together. But, um, 
Yeah, I think you would have to look up on YouTube for that. When in doubt, check it out on YouTube. Yes, Nerf Gun Wars are definitely the best. <laughs> uh, did you draw landscapes? Um, uh, do you like that? Yeah, I do a lot of landscapes. You do a lot of um, landscapes in watercolor. Yeah, I used to do a lot in oil as well. So I'm trying to get him to show up against the dark background this little guy why did you uh, flip the canvas just to see it in a new light I always flip it back and forth just to see it differently yeah because it can actually show possible imperfections or anything of that sort. yeah it just it shows it in a new light and it's you know it's, it's it feels a little fresher when you do that It'll hey Aaron, which watercolors would you recommend? Q Q O R or Windsor Newton? Windsor Newton. I recommend Windsor Newton. Uh, how can we show you the illustrations that we make from your uh, tutorials? It would be amazing to get your feedback. I'm not really doing feedback at the moment. Whoops. Um. But you can always send it to Creature Art Teacher, you know, or, uh, there we go. But I won't, I won't necessarily be able to do feedback. That's the only thing. Sorry. We just, we, I, I get thousands of requests for that and I just, I can't fulfill them all. Uh, do you dabble in other art mediums like film, music, theater, etc.? Yeah, I, I, mean, I like to play music. Um, there we go. Uh, I do dabble in others, but very, very little. There we go. Put a little blur on that. There. That feels pretty good there. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting some Yes, yes, eh? If you could hang out for a day with any artist from history, who would you pick? John Singer Sargent. Joaquin Soroya. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't think of but those, those guys for sure. Bob Ross. <laughs> Bob Ross. <laughs> we were watching Bob Ross last night when we went to bed. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> what a quinky dink. Let's go make a happy tree right here. Every happy tree needs a I love him. Bob Ross. I want to be Bob Ross. I want to be the new Bob Ross. Also sent me this earlier. Is that her? I think so. <laughs> Dad? Hey Aaron, do you believe it's wiser to invest more in a tablet and work with more affordable programs when starting out or to invest in a program and start with a more affordable tablet? I think the tab the, the drawing utensil, the tablet, I would I would put the money into first. That's a good question. Snowbear seems like a great project to do during quarantine. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, so it's also a lot of the other stuff we're doing. Just saying. <laughs> Quote of Bob Ross, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. That's right. I think I have a shirt that says that. It's a Bob Ross shirt, but I just don't remember exactly which quote it is. I think it's that one.
Would you ever consider doing art for a comic book or a graphic novel? Um, probably not. It's not my thing. It's not something I'm, I'm great at. How do you do such a fine fur coat on, a ra on the rabbit? <laughs> you obviously came in late. Yeet. That is my fur brush. I've got a whole series of fur brushes that I made. You can see right here, that fine fur. Um, I made those brushes. And then I've, uh, I've got them for sale on my website. For one dollar, you can get the whole pack for a dollar. One dollar. One dollar. CreatureArtTeacher.com When doing photo bashing, do you always make sure the original photo isn't recognizable anymore? Yes, I try to. Was oh, that locked? It's locked. Whoops. I want to unlock it, and then we're going to do this. Create a little bit of... No, not that much. Just a little bit, like right there. Yeah, see? Maybe even a little less. No, maybe a little more. There. Get that to feel like it's sitting in the background, and then we'll get rid of the drawing layer on top of it. What advice would you give to someone who doesn't really like their art and compares themselves to better artists? Stop it. Just stop it. Stop comparing yourself. It's not a contest. You know, compare, gauge yourself against yourself. That's what you need to do. Gauge yourself against yourself. Stop comparing yourself. That's just going to make you depressed. Is this live just on Instagram? No. Uh, no, we're on multiple platforms. We're on Facebook, we are on YouTube, we are on Twitch, and even Twitter? I, I keep forgetting that we're on Twitter, so... Are we on Twitter? Yes. Okay. So, there we go. Gonna be finishing this up pretty quick. The grass won't take long. How many uh, layers do you use on average? Oh, it varies. I get that question all the time. Uh, probably 30, 35. <laughs> Aaron Blaze is the new Bob Ross. I'd like to be. Opinion. What makes a strong uh, story portfolio for a storyboard artist applying for a story position at an animation studio? It's really compelling choices in your cutting, in your staging, or in your uh, acting. All of those add up to a good portfolio. I'm excited about your Birds of Prey course coming up. Have you ever tagged along with the uh, Falconer? Yes. Manny. That's awesome. Yep, Manny. I um, miss Manny. Yeah, we miss Manny. We do miss Manny. 
Manny Carrasco. <laughs> Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. So here I'm just hitting little details. What do you think is the best art program for fine details? Uh, they all have, you can do fine details with all of them, so I'm not sure I understand the question on that. I think it really depends on what you're trying to do and what what uh, what hardware you're using. If you're using a an iPad, you know, Procreate might be better for you than Photoshop, or, but friend, uh, Fresco is made by Photoshop, and maybe you like that a little bit better. So there's all kinds of choices out there. And all of it does fine detail. It just depends on the on the uh, the size that you're doing it at. Almost time for the one more thing to start. Yeah, we're getting close to that. We are definitely getting close to one more thing. If you're saying we're just gonna go here, we go again. Do you think it's difficult to find a job as an animator in the USA if you're Spanish? No. Not it's at all. all. The skill. It's all about the skill. When you were first learning to animate uh, at Disney, what were the first things you animated? Uh... I did. I created a gorilla character, and I learned how to make him walk. That was one of the first things I ever animated. Bouncing ball, just like everyone else. Um, uh, and then when I, you know, became an animator, it was Roger Rabbit. Sorry, I'm trying to hit these last... This thing's taking me a while. I'm trying to hit these last details. I'm trying to get that light on him just right. What's your favorite artwork you made so far? Oh, I don't know. I've made tens of thousands of pieces of art. I don't really keep track of which one's my favorite. I don't think I am always moving on to the next to the next one, so I don't really know. I think a lot of artists are that way. My personal favorite that I um that I missed because it got sold years ago was the um the up close painting of the uh elephant. Uh-huh. That was such a that was such a great painting. <laughs> Thanks. Gotta let it go, man. Yeah. We needed money at the time. I was broke. I had to pay my mortgage. Luckily, I had somebody that was wanted that painting. <laughs> it was still a nice painting. How do you manage the size of the file? Uh, tips on how to reduce file size? Uh, I you can compress it. Uh, I don't really, I just, I keep large uh, storage areas, so I don't really compress my files. Do you know any animators who struggle with motion sickness while they work? <laughs> no. That's funny. adding little bits of this random detail on here. You hear me? Oh, See that? That's the bug right there. 
I don't know if this is rude to ask, but what is the mo most you've ever made from selling a painting? Um, I've sold paintings for tens of thousands of dollars. I've, I've made $10,000 on paintings, and I've sold paintings for, you know, I've given away paintings. So, you know, there's, it's, uh, it's not rude to ask. It's up to me whether I want to answer it or not. But you know, I try to price my paintings compared to the time that I put into them, what I think they're worth. How do you manage computer lag on a larger file? Uh, usually, I'll just comp I'll, I'll shrink the file because I can't stand that. Because it's easier to shrink down the file than to expand the file. So. Yeah. So I'm just going through right now and really hitting. How do you know when you have to take off the pencil from the canvas? What? What? How do I know what? How do you know when when it's time for you to take the pencil off from the canvas, like when you're done drawing? Oh, like, you know what? I don't know. It's it's a gut instinct. You have to, you got to know it in your gut. And yes, I've been known to overwork my, my images before. And do you ever suffer any pains in the neck or the back or wrists after working on your Cintiq for a long time? No. No, I'm pretty good at uh, not having any of those problems. I'm lucky. All right, we're gonna we're on the downhill side here. Which three books would you recommend to a student to learn how to animate? Um, the Illusion of Life, the uh, Animator's Survival Handbook. Those are the, those are the two. Besides Pocahontas, are there any other characters that um, you did in that movie? Uh, I animated a, a shot or two of Miko. Miko was the... The raccoon. Oh, the raccoon? Yeah, I think maybe two shots, maybe one shot. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't the animator on him. Nick Raineri was the animator on him. I just ended up having a couple of shots just to fill, fill the void. How do you position your hand to support a detailed drawing without smudging the artwork? Or does only your pen or brush ever touch the drawing surface? Um, I'll use a, a, mall to, a mall stick, which is basically a stick that you prop up. And uh, is it over there? Yeah, it's right there. You prop it against the, the image or a wall and you put your hand on it. This is it here. I just it's basically a sock on the end of a stick and you, and you press it on the on the surface and you can draw or put your hand on the stick that way you're not touching the surface and rivers says hello hello rivers hello sorry nick this is taking so long we're getting there what's taking so long i want this one to come out nice i want oh. this one to come out nice he's great I think there's a compliment, but... Huh. You know, I haven't updated the uh, 
Photoshop. Maybe they fixed this bug. Because uh, I'll tell you what, it's driving me nuts, eh? I'm sure it's driving me nuts, eh? Uh, do you have a favorite art painting movement? Like the Impressionism, Romanticism, uh, Renaissance? Yeah, Impressionists. Impressionists? Yeah. And uh, do you think learning art history is important or useful? Yes. Both. I'm a little fuzzy on the, on the history of... What, what was the Impressionism? Impressionism basically is how I paint my watercolors. It's painting the impression of what's there. It's not super detailed. It's really just loose painting with, with focusing on value and color. Uh, what types of shots do you re um, recommend to animate when you're starting in traditional animation? Like, do you start with uh, walking cycles, acting shots? Yes, all of it. Do it all. What do you think of Ralph Bakshi and his films? Uh, I'm not a huge fan, but I mean, I, I, I can see how, what, you know, how people, some people like it. Ralph Bakshi. He did Fritz the Cat. He also, well, he did Lord of the Rings, the old Lord of the Rings, way back in the late 60s, early 70s, I think it was. Hey, Aaron, do you have any advice for someone hoping to become a concept artist someday? You don't, uh, you don't need to answer this. Just been struggling a little with art as of late, and it means an awful lot. Huh. Um, well, of course I'll answer it. Um, first of all, it depends on what kind of concept art you're talking about. In the world of filmmaking, there's you know a lot of different types of concept art. Character design is concept art. Location design, prop design, all those are cons are considered concept art, and usually each each one is a different specialty. So I would figure out what it is specifically that you want to do, and then gear your portfolio towards that. I was looking at all the um, history stuff around Ralph Bakshi. I keep forgetting that he uh, worked on uh, uh, Fire and Ice, A Cool World. Yeah. And Wizards. The Wizards, yeah, I forgot about Wizards. Did he also do Heavy Metal, or is that a different... Uh, I don't think so. can't remember who did Heavy Metal. And I feel like rock and roll is the same, has like a somewhat similar animation style. I don't know if that's Bakshi though. Twitch comment, I updated Photoshop two days ago, bug is still there. Uh. Directed by Clive A. Smith, rock and roll. Don't go away, please don't go. What's your favorite genre of film? Uh, sci-fi. Good sci-fi, man. I will. Oh, I love good sci-fi. Starship Troopers. No. <laughs> I hate that movie, and I know a lot of people like it. I couldn't stand that movie. I enjoy it. It's like the acting is could be better, but the action of it, it's just it's just a fun, like, it's a fun time, time waster. Yeah. All right, let's get into this grass. I'm screwing around with this too much. Man, I got... Yeah, you, know, you should you should keep it exactly the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recommend a Cintiq or an iPad Pro? Uh, 
uh, depends on what you want to do. You know, that's a because. All right, hold on. Uh, it really depends on what you want to do. You know, um, I use both, you know. Shall I leave the line work in there? Let's see. Sorry, I'm I'm uh, all over the place here. My brain my brain is switching over to the creative side, and I I'm having a hard time talking at the same time. Star Wars? Star Wars. Or Star Trek and why? Uh, I thought Star Trek was a bit more sophisticated, to be honest with you. I like Star Wars, all right. Uh, which is your favorite sci fi movie or show? Um, favorite sci fi movie? I'm, I'm a huge fan of all the Aliens films. Mm. Um, District 9, man. District oh, yeah. 9 is so good. It's funny, the story behind that movie is that that, was, that project was originally supposed to be a, a Halo movie. Oh, really? Yeah, but when the studio said, said no to it, uh, Jackson instead decided to make Di District 9 as, as a finger to the studio. <laughs> really? I didn't yeah. know that. May I know who was the one talking with you? Sorry, just curious. I'm uh, I'm his conscience. <laughs> Dustin is my son. Hi. Here's the face. Hello. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> uh, I'm the um, I work for the for the business, and I'm the cameraman, video editor, and uh live stream operator uh, for the group and on my own I also do uh, wildlife photography hello I was wondering about illustration speed what is your thoughts on how fast an artist yourself and in general should be able to finish an illustration that really depends on that depends on the illustration and the artist I mean I don't know that there's that's like asking okay how fast how fast does a bird fly? I mean, there's too many variables in there. Is King of the Elves ever going to get restarted? No. At least not with Disney. I would like to do it. I mean, wouldn't this be fun to see little guys like this on the movie screen? Mm-hmm. It would be nice. That's I one film I, I, I regret not being able to make. I was really rooting for my, my friend Kevin Dieters, uh, my friends Kevin Dieters and Stevie Wormers. They took it over after I left. And I was really hoping they'd, they'd crack that nut because it was a tough one to solve. But eventually they, they left it as well. What's your favorite animal and why? My favorite animal. And why? Uh, you know, I love big cats. I just love the drama of big cats and bears. Have you ever tried to paint Mona Lisa? No. Men have loved her. <laughs> Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have loved her. <laughs> Sing it, baby. Uh, do you like Alex Garland's movies, like Ex Machina or Annihilation? Yes. That's another favorite of mine. Is that is that Ex Machina? Ex Machina. <laughs> really. Dustin loves it when I say that. Uh, 
Yes, we have matching haircuts. <laughs> You should draw Cusco in your own own style, Sensei Aaron Blaze. You should not tell me what to do. How about now? Cusco, that's a that's an interesting request. I haven't I haven't uh, heard anyone talk about Cusco in a long time. YouTube question is copying someone else's animation like that on characters for practice recommendable like when one copies other artists drawings for practice you know I think you can learn a lot by doing that but pick great animators like Milt Call and Ollie Johnson Frank Thomas all those guys you know though yeah you can definitely learn a lot by breaking it down and trying to emulate it James Baxter you know Glenn Keane all great animators that are worthy of being copied Alright, let's finish up this grass and be done with it. Shall be we? done with it already. 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 What am I doing? I'm having a brain meltdown. Okay, here we go. Next live stream could be redesigning Raja. Hey, that's an interesting idea. It'd be hard. I mean, it's hard to do that in just a couple hours. Boy, this is turning into a long live stream. It is currently 3.45. Sorry. Sorry, Nick. Uh, do you have any artists that you recommend on Instagram? Uh, you know what? I can't think of people's names on it, but there's a lot of great ones. I don't know. Aaron Blaze. <laughs> I don't know. That was a joke. I'm not I'm not that I'm not that jerky. I'm almost there. I know we're taking a long time. Whatever you do you mean? What are you mm -hmm. talking about? <laughs> You have to watch the series Chernobyl. It is so well done. We we have. You did, didn't you? Oh, I did. did. Didn't you? I thought you did. I started watching it and I just I never finished it. Ah. Uh, yeah, I watched the whole thing through and I I loved it. You need to watch it. I you am. need to finish it. You need to stop telling me what to do. <laughs> I tell you everything I want. Uh, let's do this. When will be the next live stream? Well, today is Tuesday. Friday. So, yeah, next. It'll be Tuesday at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. E-S-T. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time, sir. Getting things a little darker down there. There we go. That makes it a little better. Now I can throw a layer on top of that and As a struggling quarantine student illustrator, thank you guys for all your kind work and help helping teach us all. You are welcome. We love doing it. What's your favorite mythology? Uh, you know what? I always confuse Roman and Greek mythology. Yeah. I prefer the Greek with Zeus and Hercules and yeah, all that, all that jazz. Or 
All that jazz. Or Beowulf. The story of Beowulf. Yeah. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be blurring the foreground as well. So I'm not worried too much about getting this grass just right. Can you hear me breathing? <sighs> Sound like my grandfather. <laughs> what happened to the movie Legend of Tembo? Uh, why did it never get made? Because the company that was making it, Digital Domain, went bankrupt. Lost all the money. And that, as they say, is that. Aaron Blaze? Never heard of that guy. Did he, he even meet Walt Disney? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Norse mythology. I like that one, too. With Thor and Loki and Odin. Oh, there's so many cool mythologies. Native Where, mythology, Native American is pretty good too. There's some good stuff. Yeah, that's the stuff that uh, Brother Bear is based off of. Exactly. You have any thoughts on contemporary art? Yeah. Um, I appreciate it, and I think there's some really great contemporary art out there. There's also stinker art out there. So, I think it gets a bad rap because of some of the bad stuff that's out there. See, huh. by having the right value and temperature, you can create... Look how quickly I was able to kind of create some depth, getting some sunlight behind on some of this grass, where it's coming through some of the grass, being lit up. You see? How are you recording directly uh, your screen? Um, we're using a stream system called OBS. And in OBS, you can set up a uh, scene uh, to be able to capture anything that is being put on the screen itself. So whatever Dad is seeing on his screen is what OBS is seeing, and that's what we can uh, stream out to you guys. OBS. OBS. How did you get the job at Disney? Um, it was 1988. And I needed a job, and Disney was looking for interns. They wanted to see if they could train artists that weren't necessarily trained in animation. Because um, I was an illustrator, uh, illustration major. And uh, and so I, sub uh, I submitted a portfolio, and I was lucky enough to get in to the internship. So I drove across the country in June of that summer of 1988 and trained to become an animator. And that's how I ended up at Disney. I, I At the finish, uh, at the end of the training, they liked my work and I was hired. Hi Dustin, went through your ins Instagram account. You are a great wildlife photographer. Photographer. Photogra photogra photographer. <laughs> photographer. I kind of I just I belly landed right there. Photographer. Thank, photographer. You very, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I really do enjoy sharing uh, the photos that the I take nage. everybody. The earthquake nage. All right, so now, oh, i got to finish this. One more thing. Please pitch Tembo to Netflix. They will love it. I don't own Ten Tembo. <laughs> it's owned by a company in China. They came in and bought it out of bankruptcy. Trust me, if I could get it picked up somehow, I would definitely do it. Hey, Uncle Travis is on. Hey, Uncle Aaron Travis. Blade shaved your head again, I see. I did. We were talking about it last night with you, and I was wanting to get taken care of. So right before we went on today, Vedanta cut it.
Any thoughts on the movie Klaus on Netflix? Have you seen it? Yes, I love it. I think it's love brilliant. It. Uh, um, it's one of my favorite animated films I've seen in a long time. What do you think of cosmic horror? Would you draw something on that topic? What is cosmic horror? I do not know. Let me... Cosmic horror. You know, I'm going to get rid of the... Oh, Cosmic goes. horror has been characterized as the fear and awe we feel when confronted by phenomena beyond our comprehension, whose scope extends beyond the narrow field of human affairs and boasts of cosmic significance. Still don't know what that is. Basically, it's somewhat like demons being like being pulled through from a different dimension. Gotcha. That sounds random. It's, You're being it's random, like, um, uh, what's that? Annihilation. The movie Annihilation. Uh huh. That's that's a form of cosmic horror. Oh, Annihilation was cool. Yeah. That was cool. I got to admit. There. I'm just getting rid of that little necklace thing that the rabbit had. Yeah, I think even the thing was a form of cosmic horror. You think? I think. Dustin. Yes. Do I the think. thing. Do the thing. You know what I can do? Watch what I can do. Look what I can do. <laughs> Stay away from my danger. I'm going to completely cover it up like this. I want the red one. There. Hey, I don't really know what's there. There we go. There. There, there she be. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, even Ghostbusters is considered one. Have you met or worked with Don Bluth? No. I'd like to meet him. I think he's pretty darn brilliant. Uh, just want to say I'm working my way through the acting for animation course at the moment. And it's amazing, learning so much. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. I enjoyed making it. For sure. How big do your digital painting files usually end up being for Photoshop? Um, if I spend a long time on them like this one, probably a gig. All right, so now what I'm going to do, we're going to, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take, and I'm going to put all of that into there. I'm going to go up to here. I'm going to put all that into a file. I'm going to copy that file. Turn that off. I'm going to, there, I'm going to merge group. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my filter and my blur gallery and we're going to do a tilt shift. And I'm going to come down here. And about there. This one we're going to get all the way out. We're just going to move that out of the way. It's getting this foreground that I want to get. We're going to knock this way up even more. Whoops. Come on. What just happened? There we go. What's wrong with my... 
my mouse. Oh, I guess my mouse is not working. So there we go. I want to get it nice and blurry. I want a really forced depth of field here. When are you going to get the rabbit its whiskers? I will in a moment. Hold your horses. <laughs> Hold your horses. Dustin, any dream location for wild, wildlife photography? I would say either Africa or Alaska. One of those two are my those two are my dream places to go for wildlife. We're gonna have to trim it. Trim it, dang. Yeah. It's thinking. It's thinking. It's thinking. There we go. So now we got a nice foreground, blurred foreground. I've got to take it in a little bit there. In a little bit. Uh, uh. Do you prefer Windows or Mac? How fast does a bird fly? <laughs> uh, Mac. I'm a, I'm a Windows guy. All right. So the last thing I'm going to do is we're going to copy this, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to jump up here, and we're going to grab a nice, warm color. I'm going to go to my paintbrush. I'm going to grab my airbrush. We're going to knock the opacity down to about 26%. And I'm going to go to Color Dodge. How long have you and Dustin known each other? How did you meet? <laughs> uh, we've known each other about 30 years. Um, we happened to meet, you know, this one night. He fell out of my wife. <laughs> and since then, I thought, hey, this dude's pretty cool. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we started talking. Yeah. And, uh, and I, start, I started saying, and he's saying like, hey, hey, I need a dad, going? you know. Hey, I need a dad. You want to be my dad? <laughs> and I said, sure, I'll, you know, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and uh, so I started, you know, dadding him, being a dad. Dadding him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, heck, it worked out. He stuck around. Yeah, he, 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 he uh, made me, uh, get get some uh, jobs going you know just to get some work experience and yeah. once he thought I was ready he brought me on board into the company yeah and that that's how that's how I became part of the business <laughs> then he became bestest of friends <laughs> yes Shana yes we did <laughs> no, he's came copying out. someone oh. hey Aaron and Dustin how different or similar is acting for animation compared to acting in theater? To me, they're, they're very much the same. Acting in theater tends to be a little bit more broad uh, because you're having to act for you know, an audience that might be 100 feet away. Um, but uh, one of the things you want to think about... Oops. You know, in, in animation, it depends on how your, your framing is, is set up. So, and what I mean by that is if you have a close-up, your acting is going to be, you know, within the face. If you have a medium shot, it's going to be within the face, but also a little bit of the body. And if you've got a long shot, it's got to be all body language, which is kind of what theater is, right? So it really depends on the shot. Uh, do you do voice acting? Um, no, I don't do voice acting professionally. Though I did do scratch <coughs> voicing for Tenbo when we when we worked at uh, Digital Digital you, Domain. You did, yeah. But that's the closest thing to professional I've done voice acting. Every everything else is just imitations, just for fun, just to just to make people laugh. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here. Where are you going to be eating Shoot. for lunch? Good question. There. Come in here and we're just going to... Soften some of this some along here.
<laughs> so Aaron is Lord Sidious, and Dustin is Anakin Skywalker, and they try to build an art course empire. It works <laughs> all out like planned. That would be that would be Nick. <laughs> People ask me all the time if Nick is my son. <laughs> that pisses me off. <laughs> Twitch question. I see many artists have their favorite art mu medium and stick to it. Do you think it's better to focus on mastering one art medium or experiment with different art supplies? I definitely think it's better to f uh, practice with other art supplies. I mean, I, I love doing a little of everything. There we go. There. Yeah, I know you meant that um, for lunch question to Dad, but he was in his own little world at the moment. <laughs> but uh, what what are you going to be eating for lunch? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said. That's a good question. Yes. Because usually you don't know what you're going to be eating until you go, I need to get something to eat. I, I go in the <laughs> kitchen, I just stare in the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm just pushing a few of these blades of grass out of focus to make them feel like they're pushed back a little ways. Does your wife do art also? Well, I'm not married right now, but Vedanta, my girlfriend, she, uh, she does do art. Yes, she's a very good artist. There we go. I'm going to also push this little bit of his ear out of focus. There we go. Maybe a little bit of that leg. I mean the uh, fur. So there we go. We finally got our little bunny rabbit and elf. Yay. What do you think? You like him? Oh yeah, it's cute. So there you go, Dustin's uh, Dustin's photograph yeah, so as, ins as inspiration for this little image right here. Bring the bunny back down. There we go. So there's our little elf. And our bunny using the fur brushes too. So. Um, if you're interested, go to my website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, and you'll see my fur brushes there, and they're only a dollar. So try them out. Grab them. Download them for Photoshop, Procreate, um, all that. Okay, so you know what? One more thing. There it is. There it is. <laughs> One more thing. <laughs> Every Sorry. single time. Sorry. I put this back to normal. Yeah, I knew it would happen. I think it's to the point where now it's just like, wait for it. Wait, wait for, for it. it. <laughs> that did ear. you forget the whiskers? I did forget the whiskers, and that ear is just not warm enough. I want it warmer. That's better. I did forget the fur whiskers. looks amazing. Is that you speaking, or is that no, somebody? Somebody, else. Uh, Mariana, Mariana said that. The fur looks amazing. Oops. Thank you. In fact, a couple of people are like, "Whiskers, where are the whiskers?" <laughs> turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it off! There we go. He only gets a. There's only a few. Oh. Yeah, he's got some down here too. There. That's a beta. That's a beta. That's a beta. So there we go. There's our. Uh, you want to show the that original was marathon. reference? That was three hours and seven minutes. What's that? You want to show the original reference? Oh, yeah. That's what you want me to do. Isn't That's it? what I want you to do. <laughs> Where's my. Oh, my cursor. My. My. <laughs> my. Uh, my. My uh, mouse is dead. 
Oh. Uh, sorry. Can't. Baby. Can't do it. But here we go. So there's our there's our image for the day. That was fun. Uh, so remember, we've got a big sale going on at CreatureArtTeacher.com. My my uh, animation course uh, introduction fundamentals is free. You can download it for free. So go on over there and do that. Also, I've got a lot of stuff that's just drastically cut down. The fur brushes. A lot of my Photoshop brushes are a dollar. Um, I've got uh, how to paint light. How to how to um, an introduction to digital painting. All kinds of stuff. That are all really slashed and uh, plus we've got some wonderful courses from other artists as well so go over to creatureartteacher.com and check all that out and you can load up you can get days worth of courses for like four bucks it's crazy yeah. i don't know why i did that because we want to provide for you that's why but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this i'm, I'm really happy we did this because i got a little character that i kind of like and uh, I see one more thing I need to do, but I'll do that later. All right. <laughs> he needs a just shadow one, under his leg. Just one more thing. <laughs> do it off stream. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Be safe. Uh, do something nice for one another. Put some beauty back into the world. And, uh, and we'll get through all this together. I hope you enjoyed today. I certainly did. And uh, like I said, have a great weekend. And I will talk to you on Tuesday. Uh, until then... Have a great weekend. I will talk to you later. I'm just talking in circles. <laughs> I just keep going back and back and forth. <laughs> Thank but you, guys. Anyway, so Dustin, go ahead. Yeah, go I'll, ahead, Dustin. Take I'll, it over. I'll take over now. Dustin will take it. Go <laughs> ahead. Thank you, guys, ahead, so Dustin. much. <laughs> will you shut up? <laughs> Thank you, guys, so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And to any of you guys that are new here and you guys are interested in any wildlife photography, you can check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze where I post a new photo or group of photos of wildlife each day uh, for you guys to see and enjoy. And also, uh, by around five o'clock or sometime later in the day, uh, my very first wave of wildlife reference photo packs are on the way. They will be in creatureartteacher.com by the end of the day. And it'll be six different uh, species in different packs, but you can get them all in one giant bundle which is the Florida Marsh Wildlife Pack, I believe it's called. Yes. Uh, so keep an eye out for that uh, throughout the day. And I hope you guys like those. I hope you guys uh, have a good weekend. Stay safe out there, as always. And we'll see you guys on Tuesday morning next week. And until then, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.